Hello and welcome to the first in our series of Mastering Research Methods webinars. Uh, this one titled today Revisiting the Scientist and is the first in a series of seven or eight different webinars where we're going to explore each of the sort of different inferential statistical tests required uh, in A-level psychology. In terms of other webinars coming up this week, we have one available for OCR teachers in particular, and that one's called What the Examiner Has Said and How to Respond for Summer 2017. And in that short webinar, we'll just look at what the exam report said uh, following the first AS exam cycle and how we can use that information to improve our teaching practice uh, summer next year. We have another webinar called Practical Ways to Help Make Your Psychology Department Outstanding. And in that webinar, I'll be joined by Laura Swash, who's going to look through some different ways that you can sort of try to make your department the best it can possibly be. And then we've then got the second of our Mastering Research Methods webinars, this one looking at uh, probability and significance. As always, all of the webinar recordings and resources were made available directly on the TutorTU website. So if you go onto tutortu.net, follow the link to psychology, then series and then CPD webinar recordings. You'll find all of the resources and videos there so that if you've missed any of them, you can go back and watch them in your own time. In terms of other CPD events we've got coming up, we've got some face-to-face -face CPD events taking place this week in Birmingham on the 23rd of September and in London taking place next week on the 30th. Uh, put a photo there of all of the different resources or many of the different resources that are going into that particular event. We've got over 40 uh, teaching and learning resources going straight into it and ready to use in your lessons. So a great, great uh, CPD event if you're after some sort of lesson solutions and activities to get you really engaged this year. Final thing I mentioned before we start is we've got our Strong Foundations workshop for students coming up very, very soon. Those start at the end of November, first week of December. And the aim of that workshop is really to support Year 13 students uh, looking at sort of uh, revising their Year 1 content and tackling some of the really difficult Year 2 content head on. So we'll be exploring things like inferential statistics, issues and debates and biopsychology to make your students and yourself much more comfortable with some of the more difficult areas of the A-level psychology. Okay. On to today's webinar, so we're looking at the sign test, and it's worth noting that the sign test is the only test if you teach AQA that's required in year one, um, and then of course is one of many tests required in year two, and it's, I know it's required also by the other exam boards as well. In terms of the, why we would carry out a test, we use it for a non, it's a non-parametric test of course, it's used if the data is nominal and you've got a repeated measures or a match pairs design. It's worth noting for AQA teachers that it's the only test that students might be asked to actually calculate in the exams. So they do need to know this test in terms of actually how you would calculate it, whereas the others they don't. Now the best way really to teach the sign test is to provide your students with, and I would model one first of all, an example that's just very user friendly, very, very easy for them to sort of understand. And it's, it's good to use their own names in there and, and work through one with them. Uh, so I've just, uh, mocked up a really simple example here where I've taken sort of 10 different names of employees at Tutor to You and, and go with a funny example. So let's imagine that Jim, the CEO, has asked us to all go on a, I don't know, a Weight Watchers program, whatever the case may be. We've got our starting weight uh, and then after six weeks we then get our, our weight again in kilograms after we've been on this, I don't know, six week intensive course. Uh, so let's imagine Jim's shed 10 pounds, uh, Jeff's lost a, a pound. I've actually gone up in weight through sitting down and delivering all these webinars. Uh, Michelle stayed exactly the same. John's lost some weight. Graham's lost nearly half of his body weight. Uh, Ruth's lost a couple of pounds. Anne's lost a pound. Haley's also lost a pound. Uh, and Anthony's also put on 10 pounds. So you can see, just mapped out whether the people have actually, what their end weight is. The first job for the students would be to actually then say, well, has the person gone up or down in weight? And this is where you apply the sort of sign, so to speak, work out the sign. Step one of the sign test is always just actually plotting has the person gone up, has the score gone up or has it gone down. So we can see very easily that Jim will be a minus, Jeff will be a minus, I'd be a plus. Michelle stayed the same so we give her a zero. Uh, John will be a minus, Graham a minus, Ruth also a minus, Anne a minus, Haley a minus and Anthony a plus. So first step is just working out the sign, very, very simple. On step two, and this is where the types of exam style questions can come in, uh, the students might be asked to say what the calculated value of S is. So give the calculated value of S and explain how you arrived at this figure. Now it's really, really easy because students may be given a table that looks like this in their exam, or they may well be given a table that looks like the first one in their exam. Now the job of the student uh, is really just to pick the lowest value, but it's important to make them note that you ignore any nil values or values that remain the same. 
So in this particular case, uh, because there was one person who remained the same, we don't count their score. If we look at the number of people that lost weight was seven, the number of people gained weight was two. And because we're just taking the lowest of those values, S would be equal to two in this case. And you can see I've modelled an answer there to say, actually, how did we arrive at that figure? You'd say something along the lines of the calculated value of S is a score we get from adding up the total number of pluses, total number of minuses, and then we take the number which is the lowest. In this case, it's two. Any differences or zero differences are ignored. Okay, uh, And there you get your three out of three marks. Another question they could be asked is they could be asked to calculate the value of n potentially, uh, less likely, it's still potential. Um, and the value of n, again, if we're going to explain how we arrived at this figure, is the total number of scores, but again, not including any nil values. Okay, So in this case, it would be very easy to do 7 plus your 2, which then gives us an n value in this case of 9. So that's the first three steps. Once you've got those two numbers, this is where the exam could potentially say, well, what is the critical value of S? And then going on from that, are the results significant or are they not significant? Okay. Um, so if they're asked to find the critical value, it's very likely or highly likely that the question will be along the lines of, well, what is the critical value of S uh, at a 0 0.5 significance level? Now, the only way students could answer that is if they're provided with a table. So the exam board would have to provide them with a table like the one I've got on screen. And again, it's very, very easy for students to work this out because the tester said it's a one-tailed test at a 0 0.05 significance level. So we go all the way down to where there are nine participants. So n equals nine. We read across, which means we end up with a critical S value in this case of one. So the critical value of S will be one. Once you've then got all of these figures, uh, this is where they could ask, are the results significant or are they not significant? And that's really, really straightforward as well. Um, for the sign test, uh, the, the calculated value must be equal to or less than the critical value Okay, for the results to be significant. Therefore, we could answer this question really, really easily. We'd just say as the calculated value is 2. This is higher than our critical value, which is 1. And therefore, the results in this case are not significant at a 0 .5, 0 0.05 significance level. And it's as simple as that. So just to sort of recap that back out in five steps. Firstly, you work out the sign. You put in the pluses and the minuses. You then calculate the value of S, which is the lowest score, excluding any nil scores. You then calculate the value of M, which is the total number of scores, all of them together, but again, excluding any nil values. Um, fourthly, if you're asked to do it, find the critical value of S, you'd need to use the critical values table in order to do that. And you'd have to work to the set level that they give you. And then last of all, determine if the results are significant. So it would be whether the calculated value is less than or equal to your critical value. And that would give you your answer. So there's the sign test in, in five simple steps. And, and we've, we've talked through that in sort of five or six minutes. Let's apply that to now one of the sample questions uh, that's in the specification, uh, just so you can see how that might pan out in the exam. So it says here that 20 primary school teachers were sent by their individual head teacher to attend a training course uh, in classroom behaviour management run by an educational psychologist at a local university. Before the training course and again after the training, the teachers were asked to say how confident they were in managing the difficult classroom behaviour. Uh, the researchers compared the before and after answers to see how many of the teachers rated their confidence as better, worse or the same uh, as it had been at the start of the course and the results are presented in table one. So if we take all five steps, the, the actual exam question didn't ask all five questions, but we could we could work out all five. Um, it says there, the first question that went with it was, would, could be, the psychologist conducting the training decided to use a sign test to see if the results were significant. Uh, give the calculated value of S in this study and explain how you arrived at that, that particular figure. Answer again here, you can see we've got table one. Uh, there are two twos in there, which actually make this even easier, but we're going to exclude the scores that remain the same, which means our calculated value of S is 2. Uh, and to get the full marks, you'd just say the calculated value of S is a score we get from adding up all of the pluses in this case, which is 16. The total number of minuses, which is in this case 2, and then taking the, the number, which is the lowest in this case 2. Any zero differences are ignored, uh, and that's how we'd get our full marks on that very, very easily. Uh, this wasn't one of the questions, but we, we can interpret it as if it was at the moment. Uh, what is the value of n and explain how you arrived at this figure? Uh, so, of course, we, we as we said earlier, the, the value of n is all of the scores, excluding any nil scores. So, again, we're going to exclude that confidence the same at 2, which means we, we add the 16 and the 2 together, which gives us an n value of 18. 
Um, if the question was what's the critical value of S for a, a one tail test at 0 0.05, so we've got our, our calculator value, we know N in this case is 18, so we again go up to our 0 0.05 significance level for a one tail test, we go all the way down to 18, and in this case that means that the, uh, the critical value of S in this particular case is 5, We've then got our three different scores. So we've got a calculated value of S at 2, N equals 18, critical value of S equals 5. Um, and we've already said that for the results to be significant, the calculated value must be equal to or less than the critical value. In this case, of course, that is absolutely the case. And therefore, these results would be significant at 0.05 significance level. There is an additional question that could go with this, which is explain why statistical testing is used in psychological research. Um, slightly different style of question, but it appeared on that particular sample paper. And there's a, a key to that particular question because it says in psychological research. So you, you're, you're actually trying to explain it, I guess, in relation to that particular study. I would certainly be uh, in, encouraging my students to apply their knowledge on a research method question like this. And I've just provided a sort of model answer for that particular test uh, on the screen. So I put there that statistical tests are used to determine whether the difference found or the relationship occurs due to chance or not. Uh, therefore, the psychologist was conducting a test to see if the training programme actually had an effect on the teacher's confidence level, and that would easily pick us up our two marks there. Now, to go with this particular webinar, as we said, it's a nice short webinar, this one, I've provided you with just two activities. The first one, I've provided a handout that goes with the example we've just used in this particular training video, uh, the one on tutor to you employees and weight. So feel free to use that, and you can get your students to work their way through the five different steps uh, that we provided so you can ask them to watch this back if you want to uh, and they could get their answers from that. We've provided a second activity called Sign Test Sorted which actually does a, a, a different example uh, with this one was looking at whether a breakfast in, in improves student uh, results in morning exams uh, and again this is a complete sort of handout that will allow them to work their way through every one of the different steps just to really make sure they're applying their knowledge and they understand how to calculate the sign test so feel free to use that as well. There are a set of teacher answers uh, also included with that particular resource as well. As I mentioned at the start of the video, all of the resources today, as always, will be posted straight away in the Facebook group, as well as be sent out tomorrow morning as part of our daily digest. So you've got the two different handout resources there. Plus, I've also included a copy of the PowerPoint for you so that you can use these slides if you'd like to. As always, if you've got any questions, any queries or any concerns, do drop me an email or ask via our sort of social media channels and we'll do our best to get you an answer straight away. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.